welcome to Olin Business School's graduation recognition ceremony. I'm Mark Taylor, Dean of the John M. Olin School of Business. I'm honored to host today's celebration for students in our doctoral, MBA, professional MBA, and specialized master's programs for what is an extremely important occasion under extremely extraordinary circumstances. Indeed, at this point, I would typically pause to acknowledge family and friends who can't be with us in person and who are watching instead on an internet video feed. But as we're all too keenly aware, the global pandemic that has beset us all means that every single one of us falls into that category this year. Today, we recognize you as you complete this step in your career growth. As you notice the names of our graduands, your classmates scrolling on the screen, I want to acknowledge the hundreds of hours you've invested in your coursework. You've worked with real world companies to analyze and solve real world problems. Many of you had the opportunity to work and study abroad before the pandemic gripped us. You've held down internships, maintained professional work schedules and honed your career goals. Your years of study, work, and even perhaps a little bit of play have come down to this day and this hour. Today should be and is a joyous occasion. And while it may be tempting to dwell on the crushing bad luck of a global pandemic in the midst of your Olin experience, I would challenge you to do otherwise. Now, more than ever, we need individuals like you prepared to face a world of challenges to create change. You've been prepared for this very moment with the skills, the business sense, the experience and the values to contribute, lead and thrive in a global world of business. Indeed, the pandemic has shown us paradoxically that business is perhaps more global now than it has ever been. Without question, we all were forced to pivot sharply after you left campus for last year's spring break. But that pivot is emblematic of what we prepare for here at Olin, a school with a global reputation for excellence. We learn how to compile and analyze data, how to apply that data in principled decision-making, how to thrive in a global marketplace, how to anticipate shifting markets, and how to be agile in times of uncertainty. And clearly, we put your agility to the test. No one could have foreseen the upheaval these 14 months have rendered in our lives, our education, in our futures. Yet once the challenge of these times has faded into the background, I'm certain that the experiences you carry forward from here will serve you through the next business plan, the next merger, the next product launch, the next startup, and even the next crisis. Although we can't be together today in person, the Olin community nevertheless felt it was important to pause to recognize your achievements. Your arrival at this moment is a testament to your hard work in the classroom, in your teams, in your extracurricular lives. Indeed, a virus that upended your academic schedules and your career exploration has only compounded the scale of your achievement. Before we recognize our graduates, I'd like to pause briefly and to acknowledge the many Olin faculty members who've worked with all of you, too many, unfortunately, to acknowledge by name today. I would simply ask you to pause a moment and reflect on those instructors who've taught you, guided your projects, mentored you, and advised you during your time here. Also, I want to recognize members of Olin staff who've worked with you. In particular, I offer my thanks to Ashley McCranda, Earl Banyes, Christy Collins, Tim Dugan, Haley Huffman, Misty Manko, Eric Nays, Nate Quest, Chance Remmel, and Rachel Tolliver. Now allow me to introduce our keynote speaker for today's celebration, Bridget Blaise Shamai. Bridget was sitting in your position not all that long ago as an MBA candidate from Washington University. Previously, she held positions at American Airlines as the Vice President for Customer Insights and Loyalty and President of the company's A Advantage program. Bridget managed all aspects of the airline's loyalty program, 
including recognition and rewards earned by members through flying on American Airlines and its airline partners. She also oversaw the company's co-branded credit card programs with Citi, Barclays US and MasterCard. Bridget serves on the Tarrant County United Way Board of Directors in the Fort Worth area. And she's a member of the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Cabinet for Washington University in St. Louis. Please give your attention to Bridget Blaise Shamai for a few remarks. Thank you, Dean Taylor. Good afternoon and congratulations to each of you on achieving this major milestone. I am deeply honored to be with you today in part to acknowledge and celebrate your significant achievement and because I feel so strongly about being a part of this exceptional community that is WashU. It is a lofty ask to suitably complement your learnings and experiences from WashU and I thought the most authentic way for me to do so is to share some of my stories and lessons learned on my journey of evolving into a more effective people and results-minded leader. So I'd like to challenge the basic assumption that we have all heard many times of don't mess with success. What I've learned many times post Owen is the exact opposite. That is, there are many times when messing with success leads to a better outcome, both personally and professionally. Let me tell you how through a couple of examples. The two examples I'm sharing with you on the surface are unrelated. However, there are key themes that tie them together. Risk taking, curiosity, courage, influence, resilience, and open-mindedness. So I start with a relevant time period for all of you. I just graduated from Owen, and it was in the early 1990s. Not a great time to be securing full-time MBA-worthy positions. But I had two marquee offers, one from a consulting firm and one from an investment bank, both globally recognized and respected firms, and the offers were lucrative. An MBA's true dream but I just could not shake a deep desire to do more. The opportunity that presented itself was to be a part of the MBA Enterprise Corps, and I became a volunteer assisting formerly state-owned companies in Central Europe that had to be privatized and transitioned into the competitive free marketplace. It was once in a lifetime opportunity. Yes, I had student loans to pay off, and yes, family, friends, and just about everyone thought I was crazy to walk away from these job offers save for me and some faculty members at Owen. And off I went to the Czech Republic, initially with a group, and then I was totally on my own in a beautiful middle of a city, Brno, where I knew no one, where I was assigned to an industrial equipment manufacturing company. I had to learn the language, the culture, create a network of friends and, and colleagues, and understand how business was done so I could influence the needed changes in an inclusive and motivating way. What I did not appreciate in my zeal to do this was how many problems there were to solve, the depth of the resistance to change, the diminishing resources from which to enable change, and the moments of pretty, pretty real deep personal loneliness. Undeterred, I went at it, working with my new colleagues on breaking complex problems into smaller, more manageable pieces so they were easier and faster to solve, placing some bets on which businesses to invest scarce resources in and which ones to shutter. Selecting the right companies to partner with during the transition, which was its own challenge, as many came with very opportunistic intentions. Encouraging others, including myself, to be flexible in charting the path forward and being committed to the successful implementation of our various plans, some of which were very bold and transformative. All the while, I am learning to conduct business in the Czech language. After two years there and joined some wins with my colleagues, and yes, some setbacks too, I decided it was time to return to the U.S., feeling that my business associates were ably positioned to continue the company's evolution, and I was ready for new challenges. While this period saw many European companies now competing in a free market for the first time ultimately shut down, I am pleased to share with you that this manufacturing company continues to this day as do my memories of an invaluable experience that tested everything I had, forced me to develop many more skills, taught me a lot about myself, and introduced me to one of the most beautiful countries, cultures, and people anywhere. I'm forever thankful that my curious risk-taking self said no to the paradigm and yes to a far more fulfilling set of experiences. 
As Dean Taylor shared, I enjoyed a career at American Airlines, where I started as a financial analyst and then held several positions in various parts of the company and ultimately became the president of the Advantage Program, the largest and most valuable loyalty program asset of its kind. There's a reason I share that last comment with you, largest and most valuable, because when I assumed a certain leadership role in this group over a decade ago, I was responsible for a sizable P&L that boasted a long history of year-over-year -year revenue growth. Lots of excitement existed around the program's financial performance, but at the time, not a lot of questioning or understanding of what influenced its revenue performance. So the team and I chose to mess with success. We began quite simply. We asked a lot of questions and let our curiosity take over in pursuit of learning how the program creates value for American Airlines and for the many partners who pay to participate in the program. As our understanding grew, it became clear our partner compensation model based on a supplier-buyer relationship had to be replaced with one that better reflected the value created. Simply put, we were leaving some money on the table as the value created was far greater than the compensation received. With our improved understanding, we set upon a course, both internally and externally, on how to better monetize the program. It was easier said than done. The decades-old status quo was well established, so influencing leadership to support the disruption to an otherwise stable and growing revenue source was paramount and but a first step. With so many challenges that define the airline industry in any given moment, here we were adding more items to leadership's long to-do list. Nonetheless, through continued analyses, benchmarking, and communication, leadership grew to be open to this. They did a great job of challenging our hypotheses and recommendations, but as our plans and results took hold, they gave us ever more latitude to make the monetization changes a reality. I value these interactions for my own development to observe effective, confident, and supportive leadership in action. For our partner interactions, it took clear communication, courage, risk-taking, and extensive negotiations to reshape the compensation paradigm from a group of companies who were quite comfortable with the old way of doing things and their resulting financial performance. And it took all of us keeping an open mind and having a deep commitment to seeing it through the many increasingly emotional stops and starts. Because change is not only hard, but sometimes it's just downright unwelcome. This disruption was the first of its kind for the company and for the industry. Through a better understanding of how the Advantage program creates value, not only did the program's revenue increase dramatically, but on the other side of all of this, the partnerships were more aligned, healthier, and better positioned for future growth together. It was a win-win for all parties, and it all started by asking a few questions. While the two stories I shared with you today occurred many years ago, the leadership attributes required to successfully challenge the assumption of don't mess with Texas are timeless. Being curious, courageous, resilient yet flexible are hallmark attributes of influential leadership. I observe this in others and always try to lead that way through my own career. I hope you will take these lessons and your many others and build upon your solid Olin foundation and do amazing things that will improve the performance of your company, the lives of others, and your own well-being. I have enjoyed my relationship with YSU greatly, and I encourage you to be active and supportive alumni. It is a privilege to be a part of this community, and you have earned being a part of it. Again, congratulations, and my heartfelt best wishes for your continued success. Thank you, Bridget. For your remarks. Next, I would like to introduce a member of the MBA class of 2021 to share a few words with us, Kendra Kelly. Kendra describes herself as a politico turned marketing pro. After a career that spanned a history making presidential campaign and communications for a series of elected officials, she transitioned to a sports and entertainment technology firm where she led marketing campaigns for more than 350 domestic and international partners across the NBA, Major League Baseball, Live Nation, the Australian Football League, and more. Here at Washu Olin, she's concentrated her studies in marketing, all the while serving as president of Olin's Graduate Business Students Association, as director of Olin's Student Ambassador Program, and also serving on Olin's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Strategic Planning Task Force. 
Congratulations are also due to Kendra as she prepares to move to New York City, where she will join L'Oreal as a chief of staff in the company's Lux division. Please give Kendra your attention. Friends, family, faculty, staff, and class of 2021 graduates, hello. My name is Kendra Kelly, and I am proud to be speaking to you today as a 2021 graduate of our full-time MBA program and elected student speaker for today's graduation. Driven by a desire to catapult our careers, we came to Olin as strangers. For my class in particular, a six-week trip around the world forever changed our MBA experience, transforming us from strangers to so much more. Together, we tackled strategic challenges for Roventus y Blanc, Gramona, and Paraventura, which are incredible wineries in Barcelona, all the while becoming Cava connoisseurs. In Shanghai, we grappled with issues facing global supply chains for beloved brands like Zara and Nike. And we even created market entry plans for St. Louis-based Strange Donuts in Shanghai. Throughout our six weeks, we worked hard. We played harder. We learned Susie Bonwich gives a killer karaoke performance. Tyler Edwards will do anything to protect his friends. Flora Fong, Gina Wang, Alex Yang, Aurora Chen, Karen Chen, Lin Chen, Yuki Goa, Zach France, Kate Veronese and Alex Ignatius make incredible tour guides and interpreters. Dean Ashley McCrander will always have electrolytes and Tylenol available at the first sign of an illness. And Lori Witherspoon, Ray Wagner, and Tim Brandt can answer almost any questions you bring to them. We supported each other in our breakdowns and sicknesses and cheered each other on when we shined under the bright lights of everything from karaoke to our presentations to even our painfully elementary mastery of xie xie. Thank you in Mandarin. You see, we came to Olin as strangers, left the country as acquaintances and returned as family. That trip solidified our class as pioneers of our revamped program and bonded us in ways difficult to articulate to those who did not have the privilege of traveling with us. But the reality is, whether you were on this trip or not, the events of the last year have also bonded us in immeasurable ways. When we entered graduate school, we had no idea we'd be doing so under one of the most challenging years of our lives. Some of us lost loved ones, felt the sting of rescinded job offers, were separated from family and friends for months and months on end, and grappled with trauma as this nation wondered whether or not to denounce hate targeting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and debated if Black Lives Matter. We wrestled these challenges and many more against the backdrop of the realization that our business school experience we thought we'd have would look quite different by the end of it. Yet, amazingly, amidst the challenges of this last year, our community is stronger than ever. In a year that could have easily broken us, we banded together, realizing that our collective strength could fortify any lack of weakness we felt individually. The things that could have easily divided us ultimately brought us together. And this is what makes Olin such a special place and our class, the class of 2021, an incredible class. Our class is assertive, self-assured yet humble, hardworking, ambitious, and primed to make good on our mission to be values-based, data-driven business leaders. As we go out into the world, I implore you all to remember that our tight-knit bond is our superpower and that much of the greatness we have achieved in this program is the result of our village, a wonderfully diverse village comprised of nearly 50% women, over 40% international students, many races, socioeconomic backgrounds, ethnicities, religions, and sexual orientations. We have seen repeatedly that we are our best when we work together. As we enter our careers, become glass ceiling shattering, game changing leaders, I challenge you to do these two things. First, remember to be intentional in seeking out diversity of thought, experiences, and people. Cultivate a community as beautifully diverse and even more diverse than the one we've had the privilege to grow personally and professionally in for these last two years. Secondly, 
Similar to how at WashU, we are all known by name, face, and story. Be intentional in creating teams where your teammates know they belong to foster truly inclusive environments. At a time when corporate and academic institutions alike are standing up to say Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ rights matter, climate change matters, the rights of the differently abled matter, mental health matters, science matters, and so much more, I urge you to enter your roles thinking about the collective we. As this incredible class will undoubtedly build, create, market, strategize for all across the world. Class of 2021, together as peers, colleagues, allies, friends, and ultimately as family, we did it. Congratulations on becoming esteemed alumni of WashU Olin Business School. A longtime benefactor of Olin Business School, James W. Reed, BSBA 28 with his wife Marcille, established the Reed Teaching Awards in 1994 to recognize teaching excellence. The impact of the Reed's benevolence and commitment to Olin will continue to be felt for generations of students, faculty, alumni, and friends. The Reed Teaching Awards are presented by Olin's graduating class to the professors whose enthusiasm and exceptional teaching most inspire, energize, and transform our students. For our required class, the 2021 MBA class selected Professor Tom Fields for the Reed Teaching Award for a required class. And it's no surprise, here are just a few quotes from students about their in-class experiences with the beloved Tom Fields. Quotes, every day was a highlight with Tom Fields. The man is sweeter than pecan pie, and I don't understand how one person can be so lovely. He is so delightfully enamored by accounting. Seeing his love for accounting made me like it, which is saying a lot. For so many, accounting was their favorite core class. I don't think accounting is anyone's favorite required class at other business schools. It is my honor to present Professor Tom Fields with the 2021 Reed Teaching Award. Thank you, Kendra. It is a great honor to be chosen for a Reed Teaching Award, and I want to thank the MBA class of 2021 for choosing me. Thank you. To all of you graduating today, congratulations. Earning a graduate degree from the Olin Business School is a major accomplishment. The fact that you are here today is a testament to the time, effort, and sacrifice you have put into your education. And not just you, it is important to recognize the role of your support network, your family and friends who have helped you to accomplish this. I can't see you, but I hope that you are celebrating today with those who have helped you get here and you should thank them for their support. As I was preparing my remarks for today, I thought back to when we first met. Well, I met a few of you before classes started. I met most of the class of 2021 back on the first day of the core accounting course in August 2019. While only about a year and a half ago, it seems like much, much longer. The past year has been a year of tragedy and suffering for many. And those of us fortunate enough to have gotten through it relatively unscathed should always remember how lucky we have been. But today is a day of celebration, and I've always been an optimist at heart so today I want to focus on the positives over the past year. In the face of what has been perhaps the greatest crisis of the past half century, I have been pleasantly surprised at how individuals, institutions, communities, nations, and occasionally the whole world have managed to work together to keep moving forward during unprecedented difficulties. Here at Olin, we move from in-person classes to online classes to hybrid classes with a speed at which I have never seen a university move before. Your ability as students to adapt at speed and with little preparation to different learning environments and to some of my failures as a faculty member uh, have been inspiring. Early last spring, an idea floated around, starting I think in sports, but quickly moving to education and other areas of accomplishment, that 2020 would be the year of the asterisk. The idea was that 2020 accomplishments would forever be tarnished by the caveat that it occurred during the pandemic and thus somehow didn't fully count. There is possibly some merit to this idea in the world of sports, but in your case, this emphatically does not apply. Your graduation today means that not only have you achieved something difficult, 
but you have done so under the most difficult circumstances in many, many years. You have demonstrated your ability to adapt on the fly and to continue to perform at a high level. This in itself is a more useful life skill than anything we cover in our curriculum. Embrace the asterisk and be proud of what you have accomplished. Let me end with a request. Please stay in touch. One of the things I have most missed this year is running into second years in the hallway between classes and discussing your future plans. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're going to be doing next year. Let me know what you're doing as you move, move forward in your careers. As a teacher, one of my great joys is hearing from former students. Thank you again and congratulations. And for the elective class, the 2021 MBA class has selected Professor John Horn for the Reed Teaching Award. Like Tom, it's no surprise that John receives this award today, given the impact he has had on so many students. Here are just a few quotes from my peers about their in-class experiences with John. I never knew I wanted neon sneakers until I saw John Horn changing his shoes before class. I don't know if there's anyone that loves the uncomfortable silence of a long pause more than John. It's really a gift. John is one of few professors who intentionally infuses diversity, equity, and inclusion into his classes in meaningful ways. And you can tell John loves shepherding us to the right answer, all the while being the smartest person in the room, but never making you feel uncomfortable by his intellect. It is my honor to present Professor John Horn with the 2021 Reed Teaching Award. Thank you, Kendra, for that kind introduction. And thank you to all of you in the MBA class of 2021 for choosing to honor me with this award. It is very meaningful to me. You, the students, are the best judges of how effective we are as teachers while you are at Olin. And your decision to bestow this on me is something I will always treasure. I know that you have received a lot of advice and are probably close to being speeched out. But I do want to leave one thought with you that I hope you'll carry throughout your career. You have been the most resilient group I have ever known. You have faced many challenges. An inaugural trip around the world at the beginning of the program before you knew your classmates. COVID emerging just as you transition out of the core and into the fun electives. Enduring virtual and hybrid teaching and enduring us trying to make virtual and hybrid work. Virtual internships, not knowing what the world would be like as you finish the program. And yet despite all these, you have thrived. Not survived, thrived. I am so impressed with the depth of talent in this class. I can't wait to see all the successes you achieve once the world decides to give you a bit of a break. Whenever you need a pick-me-up, you have the Olin MBA program to look back on. You can confidently say, I can do this. I can thrive. Now that the serious part is over, I wanted to leave you with one more smile to remember me by. Thank you again for honoring me with the Reed Award, and congratulations on graduating with your MBA. Good afternoon. My name is Julia Gilbert, and I am incredibly honored to be presenting this year's Reed Teaching Awards on behalf of the graduating professional MBA class here at Olin. Established in 1994, honoring longtime beneficiaries James W. Reed and his wife, Marcel, These awards recognize professors whose enthusiasm and exceptional teaching most inspires, energizes, and transforms their students. This year, we have chosen to award both the elective course and required course awards to the same professor, Sergio Chayet. Sergio is an incredibly animated and engaging supply chain management professor whose passion for his subject matter knows no bounds. It's no easy feat keeping a group of 60 plus full-time professionals and part-time students engaged for three hours a night, but I can confidently say that everyone here today who has taken a Sergio class left each lesson with more knowledge, more energy, and more unique stories to tell. Sergio's in-class examples make his content accessible, understandable, and most importantly, incredibly fun for students of all backgrounds. 
One of his project management students delightfully shared tales of his in-class demonstrations and advised that Sergio remove the cash from his wallet before he sets it on fire next time. For those of us who took his core operations management course, I don't think any of us will stand in line at a retail store or sit on hold with a call center and not think about Sergio. From processing cranberries to the famous beer game simulation, the practical and lasting knowledge we gained from Sergio's classes have truly made us the leaders we are today and will be in the future. With that, on behalf of the graduating professional MBA class here at Olin, congratulations to this year's Reed Teaching Award recipient, Sergio Chayette. Thank you, Julia, and thank you to the PMBA graduating class. Teaching you was an absolute joy, and being recognized for the required operations core course is very exciting. I feel I have an important responsibility in helping you establish the foundations for your future careers. So hearing that many of you found the course interesting and valuable is very rewarding. I know operations management sounds boring and it is required. So most of you probably had low expectations for that course and were pleasantly surprised when it wasn't that bad. But with the project management elective, I'm always concerned about selection bias. Those of you who decided to take it probably enjoyed the required operations course and had high expectations for the elective. So I'm always worried about disappointing you. That is why I'm especially grateful to all of you who took that course for this honor. I am truly moved and it really means a lot to me. Now, as an added bonus, I get the satisfaction of thinking that some of the students who didn't take the elective will now be wondering what they missed. I know that those of you who took it are probably thinking, not much. But if you're asked by those who didn't take it, you will probably lie to enjoy making them feel bad about missing out. Now, whether you took both my courses or only the core course, congratulations on graduation. It is an impressive achievement. I feel extremely lucky for having had the opportunity to teach you. I admire your commitment to the program and your dedication, and I will never stop being impressed about your ability to balance both being fully engaged with your demanding courses while successfully managing full-time jobs and family life, many of you raising young children. Now I can empathize because I too had young children. I mean, I still have them, but they grew up. What, you thought I gave them away? <laughs> I won't lie, sometimes I wish I had. And if you ask them, some days they wish I had to. But no, no, you know, I'm kidding. I mean, I don't know if my kids are kidding. In any event, I would like to thank all of you for sharing your valuable experience with me and the rest of your classmates during case discussions and for your thoughtful questions and comments. Some of your questions have forced me to look at the concepts I teach from completely new angles and hopefully to convey them in more clear ways. I honestly believe my colleagues and I are very lucky to be able to learn a lot from all of you over the years. I'm also grateful for the opportunity to address all of you in this video. We're all very lucky for being part of this program and for having agency over our careers. My advice to you is to take advantage of this chance and follow your passions in your professional and personal lives. Professionally, you should not be afraid to step out of your comfort zones and stretch for new responsibilities or challenges in new areas. At a minimum, you may find out things you don't particularly enjoy, but you may also discover new previously unknown passions that can end up bringing you a lot of satisfaction. Also, don't forget to mentor and support your junior colleagues. First, because we've all received help to get to where we are and keeping the chain going is the right thing to do. Second, because I found that teaching and mentoring is one of the most fulfilling activities one can pursue. And you'll find that you'll be learning a lot along the way which brings me to learning. Just because you've graduated doesn't mean learning should stop. Throughout your careers, you should continue to explore, to delve deeper into your areas of expertise, to enrich the breadth of your knowledge by being curious about all other aspects of your organizations and to learn about promising new trends. I wish all of you continued success in all your professional and personal endeavors. And don't forget to enjoy quality time with your friends and family. The pandemic has taught us a lot about public health, about global supply chain risk management, and also to value the important things in life. Congratulations on your brand new Olin PMBA degree. I can't wait to keep up with all your future accomplishments on social media. Good morning, class of 2021. My name is Roland Joe, one of the students from MSFC program. 
First, I would like to congratulate all of you for your outstanding achievement graduating from Olin Business School during this COVID time. It is really a tough time as we have to finish our whole program fully online. Your hard work and difficulties overcome makes you all ready for entering this challenging society. Now, it is my great honor to present this year's Red Teaching Award of MSFC. We had a tie this year. First, I would like to congratulate Professor Richard Franco. Professor Franco achieved his PhD from Stanford University and has taught in Olin since 2005. He has been awarded by his students for his excellence in teaching from 1996. In WashU, Professor Franco is a Beverly and James professor in accounting department and taught us for Finance 503 and 503B in four quarters, which is business analysis using financial statements. My classmates have been impressed by his excellence in teaching and his professionalism in accounting knowledge. He offered great knowledge and real practice problem for his students to understand financial statement analyzing techniques and he really cares about his students for their understanding. Although you may think the contents are difficult, he explains things impressively and gives you a way to easily memorize and use those. He engaged his students in class discussion well and attracted his students by his funny teaching style. Professor Franco has been favored and highly recommended by his past students for his outstanding teaching. It is my great pleasure to present the first MSFC Red Teaching Award to Professor Richard Franco. Congratulations again. Dear students and parents, congratulations and thank you for this honor. Parents, I regret I can't meet you. You could teach me about raising excellent people like the students in my financial statement analysis class. My grandma Rose used to say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. For my students, I offer a poem by the celebrated poet and former poet laureate of the United States, Will Merwin. This poem speaks of friendship, contemplation, the beauty around us, and how to enjoy these things. Things I didn't cover in class. The poem is titled, Finding a Teacher. In the woods, I came on an old friend fishing, and I asked him a question, and he said, wait. Fish were rising in the deep stream, but his line was not stirring. But I waited. It was a question about the sun, about my two eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, the earth with its four seasons, my feet where I was standing, where I was going. It slipped through my hands as though it were water into the river. It flowed under the trees. It sank under hulls far away and was gone without me. Then, where I stood, night fell. I no longer knew what to ask. I could tell that his line had no hook. I understood that I was to stay and eat with him. Thank you. Now I'm pleased to present another recipient of MSFC Red Teaching Award. I would like to congratulate Professor Yaron Leitner. Professor Leitner achieved his PhD from Northwestern University and has taught in Olin since 2018. He achieved the Red Teaching Award in Olin Business School in 2019 and has been awarded again this year. I was lucky that I can have one of his class last semester, which is Finance 534B, Advanced Corporate Finance to Financing. Professor Leitner offered us memorable classes during the pandemic time. He was teaching in a hybrid way and tried his best to satisfy all his students' needs. For all his lecture, he devoted a great effort in his lecture slides and showed us many real-world examples for each topic. He really shows step-by-step step for each problem solving and makes sure that we can really understand the issue. He is really patient 
when explaining the questions both in class and office hours. I still remember his cold call in his lectures as almost every class I was picked to answer the question. This makes me pay 100% of my attention during the class, which is really helpful when doing the online one. Also, he gave us many, many quizzes during the whole semester to use more like a practice to let us fully understand the lecture materials and prepare for our final exam, which is what we think that is super helpful. For all questions that sent through the email, he replied really fast and explained things as much as he can. Professor Leiner is really a nice professor and we hope we can take his class again. It is my great pleasure to present the second MSFC Red Teaching Award to Professor Yaren Leitner. Congratulations. Hi, this is Professor Leitner. Well, today I don't have my face mask on, but I hope you can still recognize me. So let me start by saying thank you so much for choosing me for the Red Teaching Award. Also, congratulations on your graduation from one of the most prestigious programs in the world. This is a great achievement and I'm very happy to share this moment with you. One of the things which makes this program so great is the students, and in particular, your passion for learning. Teaching you was an extremely rewarding experience. You are an exceptional group of students and you did a remarkable job academically. But it was much more than this. I really enjoyed your hard work, enthusiasm, and engagement in this course. These attributes, together with the knowledge and skills you acquired at all in, are a key to success. So if I were to give you some advice, I would probably just say, keep on with this great attitude. And if you're passionate about what you're doing, you will also have fun along the way. Another piece of advice is that you always keep learning. Here at Olin, I was trying to teach you not only how to follow recipes, but also the logic behind them. This, I think, will make the knowledge you acquired more valuable in the long run. ACF2 is one of my favorite courses because it combines theories from world-class economists and Nobel Prize winners with very, very practical implications. And I feel very privileged to have an exceptional group of students like you that was capable of absorbing both the theory and the practical implications. Throughout your careers, you're likely to encounter new financial innovations and you will need to apply your knowledge in different economic environments. This task will be much easier once you understand the basic concepts you learned at Olin. So again, thank you for choosing me for the Reteaching Award and for your passion, enthusiasm, and hard work. I really enjoy teaching you and this experience will always stay in my heart. I wish you all the best and please keep in touch. So again, thank you. Thank you, Kendra, for your remarks to the class, as well as to Julia and Rulan for their remarks and presentations. And of course, I'd also like to add my congratulations to Professors Chayat, Fields, Frankel, Horn and Leitner for the honors they received today. I would next like to welcome to the virtual dais, Ashley McCrander, Assistant Dean and Director of Graduation Programme Student Services. Ashley will present the academic honours, student voted honours and faculty nominated honours. The names of all of our honorees will scroll on screen during the presentation. Welcome and congratulations to the class of 2021. Today I would like to announce academic honours and awards for our students. We begin with the student marshals, awarded to the graduate with the highest cumulative GPA. Mitchell Anthony Lynn is our full-time MBA marshal, and Hannah Elizabeth Dumey is our professional MBA marshal. All graduates who have earned an invitation to join Beta Gamma Sigma, the International Business Honor Society, are now being listed on the screen. This honor is awarded to the top 20% of the graduating master's classes. At this time, I will present the MBA student awardees. We begin with the Milford Baum Prize in Marketing, awarded for exhibiting the strongest academic achievement and the most potential in the field of marketing as judged by the faculty. The recipient this year is Kendra Davina Kelly. 
Zachary Alexander France is the recipient of the Pal Nealon Prize for the strongest academic achievement in the areas of operations and manufacturing management. Prashant Punya is the recipient of the Olin MBA Finance Award given to a graduating MBA student for achievement in finance. The Joseph W. Tal Prize recognizing the strongest academic achievement and the most potential in the opinion of the faculty in the area of organizational leadership is awarded to Raymond Thomas Wagner III. Next, we have the Center for Experiential Learning Impact Award, recognizing MBA students who delivered the highest level of impact to the business and nonprofit communities through the Center for Experiential Learning and other Olin sponsored programs and activities. Receiving this award today is Susanna Bonwich. Lori Ashley Witherspoon is the recipient of the Paul Cuff MBA Award for Outstanding Leadership, which is awarded to a graduating African-American MBA student for outstanding leadership, academic excellence, and involvement in Olin extracurricular activities. The Olin MBA Entrepreneurship Award is being awarded to Derek Young Leiter. This award goes to the graduating student who in the opinion of Olin's entrepreneurship faculty, best exemplifies the qualities of impact, acumen, knowledge, service, attitude, and growth while studying entrepreneurship at WashU. Next, we congratulate Kendra Davina Kelly, who is the recipient of the John Wayne Leitcha Memorial Award for the MBA graduate who best exemplifies the qualities of integrity, loyalty to friends and country, courage, intelligence, and high standards of personal conduct. Kendra has also earned the Hubert C. Moog Prize for best exemplifying the qualities of character, leadership, and service, while also enjoying the respect, admiration, and affection of their classmates. The Dean's Special Service Award recognizes MBA students or student organizations that have rendered extraordinary service to WashU Olin. This year's award also goes to Kendra Kelly. This year, Kendra served as an outstanding representative for her class on the Racial Equity Task Force. She confidently and thoughtfully identified several key initiatives for Olin's continued growth in its diversity and equity strategy. And furthermore, saw opportunities to partner with the Dean to enhance the lived experience of student inclusivity in the Olin community. Kendra embodies Olin's values of diversity, collaboration, leadership, excellence, and integrity. Students of her caliber are rare, and we believe she is truly deserving of this award. And now for the Professional MBA Awards and Honors, we begin with the Olin MBA Entrepreneurship Award. Receiving this award for the PMBA class are Kyle Christopher Collier and Cameron Matthew Loyette. Again, this is awarded to the graduating student or students who in the opinion of Olin's entrepreneurship faculty best exemplify the qualities of impact, acumen, knowledge, service, attitude, and growth while studying entrepreneurship at WashU. The Hiram and Mary New Owner Prize is awarded to Leif Allen Folk for contributions in the classroom and excellence in writing papers and taking examinations in the evening program. Michael Adam Mosbacher was elected by their classmates to receive the Peer Recognition Award. It honors a student who exemplifies the qualities of character, leadership, and service, as well as the respect, admiration, and affection of their fellow PMBA students. The Professional Achievement Award goes to Julia Gilbert for exemplifying the qualities of integrity, loyalty, intelligence, and high moral character. I now will announce the Specialized Master's Program Award of Academic Achievement. The Outstanding Corporate Finance Student Award goes to Rushu Gao for exhibiting the strongest academic achievement and the most potential in the field of finance in the opinion of the faculty. Now, I'd like to spotlight additional honors and distinctions to be recognized today. I would like to recognize the Bauer Leadership Fellows. The Bauer Leadership Fellows are a collection of the top student leaders WashU Olin has to offer. The program helps students advance their leadership capacity and refine and understand their values and strengths to become the next generation of values-based leaders. Next, I would like to recognize the Center for Experiential Learning Fellows. These graduates have given their time, energy, and leadership to help advance Olin's experiential learning programs and have greatly impacted the learning experiences of their peers. I would also like to recognize the U.S. military veterans who are graduating today. These students who have bravely served this country bring excellent leadership skills, an amazing work ethic, and inspiration to our graduate programs. 
a special salute goes out to our graduating veterans. Congratulations to all of our award winners for your achievements. At this time, I would like to invite Jessica Hatch, Associate Director of Admissions for Doctoral Programs, to present our doctoral candidates. Thank you, Ashley. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this special occasion. Today, we have several candidates we'd like to recognize. First, for the degree of Doctor of Business Administration, we recognize Pornitira Tentracool Jefferson with a dissertation titled Banks versus Shadow Banks, Evidence from the 2015 FHA Mortgage Insurance Premium Cut. Congratulations, Dr. Tentricol. Next, for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration, we recognize the following candidates. Swami Nathan Bala Submaranium, with a dissertation titled Essays in Information and Liquidity. Congratulations, Dr. Bala Submaranium. Parshuram Bala Submaranium, with a dissertation titled Three Essays on Competition and Misconduct. Congratulations, Dr. Bala Submaranian. Yi Jun Chen, with a dissertation titled Peer Interactions in Decision Making. Congratulations, Dr. Chen. Nina Han, with a dissertation titled Essays in Investments. Congratulations, Dr. Han. Tae Jin Huang, with a dissertation titled Antecedents and Consequence of Flux and Coordination Caused by Team Membership Change. Congratulations, Dr. Huang. Manish Kumar Jha, with a dissertation titled Essays in Corporate Finance and Machine Learning. Congratulations, Dr. Jha. Rodrigo Ignacio Moser, with a dissertation titled Essays in Household Finance and labor and finance. Congratulations, Dr. Moser. Landon James Ross, with a dissertation titled Essays in Empirical Asset Pricing. Congratulations, Dr. Ross. Patricia Becky, with a dissertation titled Managing Errors in the Perception of Workplace Social Networks, The Case of Workplace Cooperation, Congratulations, Dr. Becky. Haesung Yu, with a dissertation titled Essays on Markets with Frictions. Congratulations, Dr. Yu. Leifu Zhang, with a dissertation titled Essays in Financial Economics. Congratulations, Dr. Zhang. This is truly an outstanding accomplishment. Thank you for your hard work and congratulations to all of our Olin doctoral graduates. Congratulations to all the honorees recognized in the doctoral class of 2021. Congratulations, doctors. Before we wrap up our celebration together, I want to say a few words about WashU Olin's ongoing commitment to all of you as you leave the university and begin your careers. I'm fond of saying, once Olin, always Olin. And my colleagues and I have taken that to heart. Wherever you are in the world, wherever your career path takes you, we want you to stay connected to your alma mater. From social events and speaker series, from career resources and lifelong learning, we're here to help you remain engaged, to stay informed, to help you grow your network and continue learning. Olin's lifelong learning platform has been developed just for our alumni as part of that always Olin creed. And it's filled with opportunities for you to grow across your career, both personally and professionally. With that, I offer my heartfelt congratulations to the graduates in the WashU Olin Business School class of 2021. Since mid-March last year, I've been heartened every day by the fortitude, resilience, and creativity we've seen from our staff, our faculty, most importantly, from you, our students. And I'm privileged to have the opportunity to recognize you today. Allow me the honor, allow me the distinction of extending best wishes for success to our newest Olin graduates. I urge you, remain engaged with your alma mater. A lifelong learning relationship awaits you. Welcome 
to the alumni family of Oling Business School and of Washington University. Congratulations to the class of 2021. And remember, once Olin, always Olin. <laughs>